On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks keep their pick. They land at 10. Now, what should they do with it? We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now, Mavericks. NBA champions. Don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. Join the Raccoon Squad, become an everydayer, and subscribe or follow wherever you get podcasts. Just search Locked On Mavericks. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day comment anything below let us know in the comment section uh who do you want the Mavs to take with the 10th pick let's say they keep it who do you want them to take let us know in that comment section below appreciate each and every one of you if you want to support the show text us get alerts from us on rumors and stuff all throughout the off season subscribe to our subtext click the link in the description below and join me as always my co-host writer contributor at mavs.com the pick keeping keeper the one we're thinking what you got for me isaac harris oh so refreshing we're pretty mm. confident we went into this confident that you did i did <laughs> they were going to keep that 10th pick and uh got to keep the 10th pick it's huge for um you know, I wouldn't. It's not like franchise altering, but it's a it's a really uh, good day for the Mavs because this is this is why you tank those last few games is to have the shot at keeping this tenth pick. To, to <laughs> Get everybody on Twitter mad at you, and then to keep the tenth pick. That's why they yeah. did it. And to have people, national media people, still not understand the concept of math for that. But uh, <laughs> but no, it's exciting for Dallas to keep the 10th pick. Uh, that's cool for them with flexibility. We'll talk all about what they can do with that. But I am just leaving this draft lottery thinking one thing. What? How will Victor feel backing up Zach Collins? Because <laughs> the Spurs have already declared Zach Collins as their starting center next year. So how is he going to feel? Not tonight. They declare that at the end of the year. Basically, I mean, it's tongue-in-cheek there. But, like, hey, Zach Collins did enough. But, man, San Antonio. We just – Tim Duncan, the Admiral. And now we got to – why? Now we got to look at Victor for the next decade. At least two home, two Mavs games against the Spurs, two Mavs home games every year will be fun. So at least you got at least you got that with Wembenyama. But on today's show, we'll talk about we'll take a look at some early prospects at the tenth pick. I want to ask the question: Do the Mavericks have to trade this pick? We'll try to answer that a little bit later. But let's start here. The Mavericks just keep the tenth pick. This what does this mean for the Dallas Mavericks? You, you touched on it a little bit, but what does it mean for the Mavs to keep this pick? It just adds an asset to your arsenal of, you know, you're going into the summer that you got to make changes. You got to improve the roster. Your number one goal this off season is to re-sign Kyrie. And then after that, you're changing out all the parts. Like Jason Kidd doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Nico Harrison's not going anywhere. Um, we've talked about, you know, the major pieces, you know, with this organization, Luca, Kyrie, if all of those pieces are staying the same after a disastrous of a season, what's got to change. And we see, Dang, my kid's just like you can't just like, rammed oh. into the door. I, know. I heard I like, that. Dang. <laughs> um, anyway, you got to change some pieces, <laughs> and you know, it looks like in both the front office and the coaching staff that they're adding some experience to that. And Dennis Lindsay, and now they're looking for an experienced um, ex head coach to join the you know the bench there alongside Jason Kidd. And then outside, when it comes to the roster. It's an overturn of all the surrounding pieces for the most part. Not every single one of them, but you got to get a, a you know a couple more quality starters in there. And to make that happen for Dallas, you got to be able to have assets to make it happen. And this tenth pick is arguably their best asset going into the summer now. To, to tradable, the, tradable asset. Oh yeah, Obviously, uh, Luca's the best one. Yeah, the best tradable asset. I mean, what has more value right now, the tenth pick, Josh Green or Jaden Hardy? The tenth pick. The tenth pick. So, and the, there you the go. picks will always have more value, especially if you know the number of it, because it's always the unknown, or it's just about the other team being able to pick their guy and not have to pick, you know, the guy that's already been, you know, been used in the NBA and maybe maybe has value and maybe doesn't. Can we talk about how stressed Nico Harrison looked on the on the, on the on like <laughs> what do we call it a dais? I don't know the podium. Uh, they have those little desks up there, and they cut to Nico Harrison off after they went through everybody else, and he was just like. 
looking at the camera like dead like dead eyed. I mean that, that's that's a stressful situation because if all of a sudden they lose that pick, they're in a, a bad situation. But they keep the pick, and like Isaac said, it, it matters a lot because they they have this asset now. It's one more tool in the tool chest that wasn't a very full chest <laughs> to begin with. It's another tool that they can use. They've got to make a couple of moves. They have to absolutely get a starting center. They have to absolutely probably add another another wing uh, that can play. Probably too. They prob- probably two wings. One at least that can be a starter to me. A, a one starting wing and probably another one to come off the bench at some point. Like they, They've got to add a couple of these pieces. Figure out what you're doing with Tim Hardaway Jr. Figure out what you're doing with the center rotation with Dwight Powell and JaVale McGee and Maxie and all that. They have to sort through some of these things, and now you at least have this pick that they can that they can use and dangle in trades and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, when you look at you know all of their pieces or all of their assets going into the summer, you got to have contracts to match salaries, and they kind of have that, right? Like they have this Tim Hardaway contract. They have you know virtually an expiring contract in Davis Bertans. You know, five million of that seventeen. It's not you know, expiring, but five of the 17 is guaranteed for the following season. Um, So it's kind of like an expiring contract. Um, I'm assuming they'll pick up, you know, the rest of Reggie's money before the draft to where he would be an expiring contract around $10 million. So they have some, you know, Maxi's around that $11 million mark. They have some contracts that they could piece together to really reach about any number out there for any, any player. Um, And so then you got to look at, you got to have the, the contracts to match the money. Then you got to look at what's the sweeteners, you know, what, what is the, what's the young pieces that's really going to make this trade happen. And going into the summer, you had Josh Green and Jaden Hardy is like, basically you're only two. I don't even know what their value is across the league really of like, it's kind of like beauty in the eye of the beholder of like, yeah. I don't know how a team views Jaden Hardy right now, or even Josh Green, he has some contract stuff coming up. Now you add the 10th pick to that group of the Josh Green Hardy group to where that's your ultimate sweetener now to whenever you're, you're taking your contracts to match the money of another guy out there. So it's just huge for Dallas in that sake that, I mean, I know there's we're, we're going to do a ton of draft profiles and I'm so excited. I love yeah, the NBA love draft, but not to be the Debbie Downer about the draft stuff. I just really, really don't think that Dallas is going to keep <laughs> this pick. Now I think they can move back. And, and still add somebody, it, but but I I would be at this point right now lottery night, I would be thoroughly shocked if Dallas is picking at ten on on the draft night. Yeah, or that you know we know that they're picking for somebody else because that's the only way that they can trade the, this this pick is that they they have they pick somebody and then they trade it because you can't trade yeah. in multiple drafts. They still now have that Knicks pick that for the for the Porzingis trade that still has to go out since they didn't give this one away. So that still is like hanging over them. So they can trade the 10th pick and they can trade the 2027 pick going forward. So those are the two picks that they can trade in any kind of deal this offseason and then maybe give the the Knicks pick away next year and then like it clears up just a little bit more after that. But but that's where the Mavericks are right now. And yeah, th- this 10th pick becomes their best asset. It becomes their best trade piece and it becomes the thing that you look at where okay, if we're going to start building a package, it starts with 10 because nothing, nothing else is that interesting that you have, really. You, you mentioned Josh Green. You mentioned Jaden Hardy. You got the contract with Tim. But there, there's no other piece that you're going, okay, we have this player that other people would want that doesn't really fit for us. And so you're looking at starting with 10, which is a great place to be, I think. And t- and- 10 gives you the ability to attach it to one of your contracts, like a Bertans, like a Tim Hardaway, and say – now we can take that package those together and get a guaranteed starter. And that's one of our biggest things for this summer is bring back Kyrie, but also we need a guaranteed, another guaranteed starter, if not two this summer. Coming up. I want to know if the Mavericks have to trade this pick. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that coming up, but before we do, let me tell you about a new sponsor that we have that I Uh-oh. think is, uh, is pretty interesting. I'm wearing them right now. It's bird dogs. Hey, tell me about your bird dogs. You got some in the mail. I'm wearing mine right now. These bird dog shorts are uh, are awesome. Tell me about yours. Listen, if are you out there and you are, are you do you work at a place that this is I do I the, do work at a place. This isn't even part of the hattery. Do you work at a place to where like the the dress code is pretty relaxed, but you still have like meetings and stuff that you got to go to, and you can't be wearing like basketball shorts and like all that stuff. Bird dogs is literally the place. I wore these shorts today to work and like they look classy enough to wear them to meetings. And I was in multiple meetings today wearing my bird dog shorts. I loved them, dude. Like 
I'm a, I'm all in. Like I, I'm all in. There's like I texted Nick about it and everything. I'm like this bird dogs uh, package is uh, uh, pretty impressive. So that was an elite package that we got. Uh, there's the fit. They fit really great. Yeah. You get to put all kinds of, kinds of different measurements, and I have flexible too. Like I have I have weird measurements, but I put my measurements in, and I got a good I got a good pair of, of fitting shorts. That's good. Uh, they're comfortable. They feel good. They have like a some of them have like a lining, so you don't need to wear underwear with them. Which is yeah, mine has some lining in them, which is an interesting feature. And they're versatile. Like Isaac said, you can wear them to a meeting. You can wear them to uh, Six Flags. You can wear them to wherever. It's it's summer is coming. I'm thinking of things people do in the summer. It's summer, summer coming. Is coming in dallas and it's uh it's gonna get real hot and so you're gonna want shorts that look good though you don't want to be wearing pants everywhere so go check out birddogs.com slash locked on nba when you enter the promo code locked on nba all caps one word locked on nba they'll throw a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler i don't have my near me do you have yours uh no uh, it's in the kitchen we got the bird dogs tumbler uh you'll get that with every order so again birddogs.com slash locked on nba Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of this show, and, uh, and yeah, sticking with us five days a week. We'll be, we are a five-day-a-week Dallas Mavericks podcast all through the offseason as well. Subscribe to our subtext to help keep us five days a week and support the show. Isaac Harris, do the Mavericks have to trade this pick? You talked very distinctly and specifically about how the Mavericks will probably trade this pick, but do they have to? Uh, yeah, I, I think they do. Um. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, next segment. <laughs> I'm not, but do they have to trade the 10th pick? Yes, I think they do. Do they have to trade out of the draft completely? No, they don't. And so it, I don't think that if you're sitting there saying, man, I just really want to add a young guy to, you know, to this team. It's exciting. It's all of that. There's still a way to do that and still trade the 10th pick. I just don't think that there, when you look at that crop of guys and prospects that are in, that that's in that range, I think honestly, once you get to like, kind of like the, six seven we, we're gonna dive i gotta dive all deep and make profiles and all this stuff i'm so <laughs> excited um i it's so wide open to me right now that it's like man if you just if you move i think it, you're really gonna find teams just finding like really getting fixated on a, in a, on a certain player or a prospect yeah. that you could see uh you know a, a team coming up and saying all right i really want to trade up to get this guy so yeah, I think they I think they have to trade. I think you have to utilize this moment at the 10th pick to either one get off salary, long-term money, or two to like add this and have this situation to move back and add another quality piece to your rotation. So, yeah, I think honestly think it would be kind of like mismanagement if you stood pat at 10 and just took a player for where you're at and the pieces that you need. Cuz you look at the guys I'll go that far. You go. You look at the guys that are going to be available, and we'll talk about all of them. We'll break them all down. But like the Taylor Hendricks, the Case and Wallace, the uh, Jairus Walker, you know, like some of the Grady Dick, some of these guys that are going to be in that in that Brady range. What? Are they helping you day one? Yeah. Because if if they're not, and if they, if it's going to take them a little while, even if they could be like a Keegan Murray, like I don't know if that's enough. And Keegan Murray was like the fourth pick. Even mm -hmm. if they're that kind of a guy. Do they help you enough to get you back to where you want to go? Whereas what Isaac said before, be a little malpractice because they have to add something this offseason. It's too important. It's to even like think past to the future and all that kind of stuff. Sure, you want to walk and chew gum at the same time. You want to be good now and in the future, but you have to be good now and they're not good now. <laughs> they missed the, yeah. they missed the entire postseason for, you know, even though they decided to the last two games. But <laughs> they they missed the whole postseason. And so you have to make moves and and it would be mismanaging your assets, like your best asset to not try to use it to go get something else. Uh, they don't have to trade the future first, right? Like those, those are two no. picks that they can trade, but I think they have to, tr I think they don't have, have to trade to. this one because it's going to be a better pick than that one. Cause that pick is, is hopefully going to be like the 25th, tw you know, <laughs> like tw yeah. in the twenties kind of pick. This one is a 10th pick in a draft that has a pretty good top three or four. And then all of a sudden, like it gets pretty deep then if you, you push all the rest of the prospects down at that point. So I think they have to, I think they have to too. We'll talk about yeah. some of the prospects if like, but, at but, this but point, the cool like, thing about talking about some of the prospects is it's not like we're sitting at four and you're like, all right, well, no matter who's picking at four, it's probably going to be a Thompson brother, like, you know, yeah. or unless somebody rises up to uh, picking at 10, like we could talk about players that's like, you know, mocked around that range that they could, 
be there at like 14 if they move back too. Yeah. So, I mean, a guy like Cam Whitmore, I love Cam Whitmore out of Villanova. Um, guys, y'all should see the uh, the clip. Bobby Corrales at, up at the combine right now. I was texting with him about he watched a bunch of players work out and some players stood out to him. And uh, Whitmore is one of them. Uh, Jairus Walker was one of them. Uh, but anyway, he posted a video on like his top five standouts from the, from the combine. You should look at that. But Whitmore is one of the guys that they had footage of and, um, talked about, but he's, I really like him a lot. He's probably not going to be a guy that drops like 12 or 13. Um, but if they, you know, at 10 or if they moved up a few spots, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk. This will be a podcast at some point oh, they're talking. They're is the <laughs> what, you know, what would warrant Dallas moving up a few spots? You know, who would somebody be, would what's it maybe worth it to move up that you think is such a quality player in this draft what would that would they even be send? Yeah, no, but I'm saying, you know, would a Josh Green and pick 10 to move up to eight or seven or something like that? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, w- I would be surprised if they moved up. Um, but yeah, I, I think if you had to put money on it right now, if FanDuel had odds on if Dallas was going to do something, I would put money on them moving out of, you know, pick 10 down you know down some spots and picking up a quality uh, rotation piece i don't think they'd move up <laughs> I, I, I no, don't think, I don't we, think, we, we yeah. can talk about it but i don't i don't think that they will at this point but yeah you have to use this you have to fix some one of your flaws and i don't think that one of these guys can fix your flaws especially the guys in the in this range i don't know that one of these guys is coming in to be a 40 minute per game in the playoffs type player and that's what i think the mavericks have to add so i think they do have to trade this pick and there's a lot of options. Like we, we've talked about a lot of different teams that would want players in this range. Uh, and like Isaac said, there's a lot of like some team will get attached to Taylor Hendricks or attached to one of these guys and say, we got to get them. And so, and then the Mavericks can trade in that spot and to trade to a team that's taking a different direction. Like the jazz did with the Lakers this off season. They found a team that was taking a different direction. They traded on their pick. They got a couple of role players and got a couple of, replacement players for him and it worked out so well there in the western conference finals getting their butts beat at this point. and uh wait who's getting their butts beat the lakers are they're getting doubled up by the nuggets right now in the first quarter oh what is that like eight to four no 24 to 12 oh good uh and another thing about the prospects at this 10th spot is you know you start looking at some of these you know big boards right now depending on where you look obviously um is you know, there's a lot of like combo guards around that spot. You look at it like a Nick Smith, or you look at it like a Keontae George, um, even like a case Wallace out of Kentucky, you know, um, you could even, I don't know where Buffkin's going to go uh, for Michigan, but a lot of these guys, you're looking at that like six, three to six, five range. And Dallas just doesn't like, they don't, they got that at home, right? Like they have a <laughs> Jane Hardy right now. They, yeah. they, you know, they need, you know, some bigger wings, they need a big. So if they stood put it, you know, or stood, stood put, <laughs> uh, if they stood pat at 10, you know, that's where you're like hoping if, you know, can one of those wings drop there? Would an Anthony black drop there? Um, you know, yeah, I think it, it, I think 10 might be a little too high, you know, when you, you start looking around at like lively and stuff at Duke, even though, you know, yeah, Rafael loves him, but that's where I'm talking. That's where it comes into play of can, will it, will a team fall in love with one of those guards, a Keontae George, a Nick Smith or something like that and say, man, we need, we just really need a good scoring punch uh, in our backcourt and where you could trade off, dro- drop down four or five, six slots, bring in a Derek Lively from Duke while also adding a veteran, you know, rotation piece at the same time. That's what I would right now, just really quick after the lottery. That's what I'm saying. Man, that would be a win coming out of draft night. Coming up, let's talk about the prospects that are going to be there. Let's just start naming a couple. If the Mavericks did keep it, we think they're going to trade it. But let's talk about if they did keep it, who they should take. And we'll talk about that coming up. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into the prospects that are going to be there around the 10th pick and who the Mavericks could be looking at and who they could trade to somebody else and see how valuable some of these guys are if they do end up doing that. Um, Jairus Walker is the the guy that uh, Rafael Barlow of Locked On NBA Big Board has mocked to the Mavericks at ten in his most recent mock. Uh, what do you think about Jairus Walker? We'll just give some some quick takes on, on some of these guys. I like him. I think he's got a he's got a body for the NBA that you're like, all right, he's he's already there uh, with that. It's just it, for him, it comes down to shooting, you know. And for Dallas, if you're going to play alongside Luka Doncic and Kyrie. 
Uh, if you're going to be out there in the corner, you better be hitting that corner shot. And that's my only worry about him is, you know, yeah, he's a really good defender, a big body guy that you love him on defense, but you got to be able to hit the open shot too. So are you confident in the open shot? That's the biggest thing. Yeah, he only shot 66% from the free throw line. Not really a good indicator that you'll be a good shooter in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, 41% on unguarded catch and shoot jumpers. So that's twos and threes. That's kind of a weird, but he's shot 34% from three. So you're like, okay, he's kind of in like a, a he, he didn't shoot terribly. The free throw percentage wasn't that great, but he could be a really good two way type guy. Where if the Mavericks need a really good defender, you bring in a guy like this. The Mavericks don't have a guy like this on their roster <laughs> that's, yeah. that's this big, this athletic, that, uh, you know, can can guard like this. He can, you know, he, Rafael says that he's got the strength of the wingspan to defend fours and some fives while serving as a rim protector. Like, that's not something the Mavericks have. And could they find a center, a different center to work with a guy like that? Um, would be awesome to, to, yeah. you know, to, to figure something out. So like he would be one that I, I've been tweeted about people have like subtexted us and they have, have sent us a lot about Jairus Walker as a player that they're looking forward to that they think could, could fit really well. Uh, is there another prospect you're looking at, at the, in this range? I mean, if he falls the 10, uh, I would love Anthony black uh, guy six, seven, six, eight. Mm. Um, he could be your third ball handler. Jaden Hardy, I think playing off of Anthony black in the second unit would be awesome. Um, he can, yeah, I mean, he can run the offense. He's a really good defender. Um, yeah, he played Arkansas. Arkansas has a handful of these guys uh, in the draft this year. Um, shout out to you know, Walsh for them. He's a kind of a sleeper pick for me that I really like on the wing. But mm. anyway, Anthony Black, if he falls at 10, he's probably not going to be there at 10, but I like him a lot. Yeah, to me, Rafael has him at nine, so maybe he does fall in that range. But Please. I think he could be a guy that ends up being all right after the Thompson twins, he's the lock at seven or, you know, or whatever at the, at that point, yeah. six or wherever that ends up being. Um, yeah. He, he could end up being that guy, but yeah, a, a wing an athletic wing that's six, seven and not six, five <laughs> feels like all the Mavs wings are six, five at this point Yeah, uh, with Tim Hardaway and Josh green and, and them. But yeah, to have that kind of a wing, he only shot 32% on jump shots last year. So again, mm. you're, you're worried about the jump shot, um, yeah. but he does a lot of other things. Well, are you looking at some of these guys and trying to figure out how they fit and what the Mavs want to play? Because we've talked about a lot. Luca wants to play slow. Kyrie wants to play a little faster. Are you taking that into consideration when you look at any of these guys? Because Anthony Black is really good in transition, but the Mavs don't do that that often. I mean, not a ton, mainly because those are two different styles, right? Like that's Kyrie and Luca. And it's like, all right, well, if you draft a player that runs, you know, likes to get out and run, then okay, you can play him with Kyrie and stuff when Luca sits. Like a guy who can sit in the corner, hit a three whenever Luca's dissecting the defense, then yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to play him with Luca. So, hope, I mean, ideally, it's not that cut and dry. <laughs> it's not that black and white that you're going to draft a player that can play both styles. Uh, like a Cam Whitmore. I, I mean, I really like Cam. I said that earlier, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's so intriguing. We haven't even got to really talk about the draft order really. Um, and just like our thoughts on that, like what? Oh, go ahead. oh. and you know, down, I mean, Orlando sitting there like six and 11 in this draft w one, when Mark Tatum pulled out that, the, the envelope and it said Orlando, I was expecting Chicago because I didn't know how they were going to do that. Like, Hey, it's Chicago's logo, but you know, Orlando, it's technically their pick. And my heart sank just for a second because I was like the 11th pick and it wasn't the bulls. I was like, Oh, no, no. And I saw the, I saw the blue <laughs> and I like had a mini heart attack for a second. But, um, I think it's going to be hard to like mock through here. I think mock drafts that's going to come out are going to be all over the place. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, after, you know, after three, um, from four down, I mean, down through there, I mean, you're going to see people all over the place, I think. And that, you know, Orlando stay at both six and 11. Are they going to add two lottery guides to this super young team? Um, I don't know. Like, so let's do one more prospect and then let's talk about the, the actual order. Yeah. Um, Taylor Hendricks, I think is another player mm -hmm. that a lot of people have mocked. Raphael has him at 12, but I think a lot of people have Taylor Hendricks mocked to, uh, to the Mavs. He's six, nine from, from. Uh, University of Central Florida, and he's a, a big wing that can do a lot of things. He he's, can be really good on offense. He's incredible on defense. He's got a real active motor. Um, he's He struggles in certain areas on offense, but he he has, like, the tools. You can start to see yeah. uh, the tools. He's shot 
39% from three. He got 2.6 stocks a game, steals and blocks combined. Like, he just puts together a lot of the things the Mavericks want. Like, this is the guy to me. I, I mentioned his name as an example a lot. This is the guy to me. If you're going to keep the pick and you're like, okay, we think we can get a Keegan Murray type that can actually play for us day one and can be a piece that just fits so well next to Luca for a long, long time. I think it's him. I got to do more research into him. My initial thought is like, man, like UCF, like it, it, who is he playing against? You know, I, I have a little, I, I'm a little. We didn't see him against the Big Ten. We didn't see, we didn't see yeah. him play. <laughs> um, Take it back to the Luca joke. I just don't have any firm takes on him yet at this moment. Like I'm open to on paper. You look at the measurements and you look at some of the stuff and you're like, all right, cool. Like it, you know, crosses off some of the boxes you want on, on, on paper, but I got to watch him some more. Yeah. I just wasn't watching too much UCF games and <laughs> to see, to have a firm you. opinion. <laughs> what about the actual order? We talked a little bit about San Antonio. I'm excited to just see two Wembenyama games in person every year. And we may now yeah. go down to San Antonio and see some of those games since those will be more interesting, but uh, yeah, I guess I guess it's fine for them. I'm interested to see what Pop does now that they got Wembenyama. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's cool for San Antonio. They don't have any like a list prospect, you know. So to have, I mean, I like Keldon, but just to yeah. you know build around him, have the whole Tony Parker conversation a million times, and uh, the Charlotte stuff. I think we were talking about this before we hit record. Charlotte stuff was cracking me up because I'm like, you send Mark Williams, <laughs> the guy who's going to be replaced by Wimby. If you know, it's still like he's like he looks like he's pissed the whole time. I'm like, well, I don't blame him because he's like, why am I here? Uh, am I gonna get replaced here? Am, am I supposed to be excited about my replacement here? <laughs> um, they landed too, which that becomes, uh, I'm sure that'll be a lot of talking, you know, for a lot of people, uh, tomorrow of like Scoot, you know, Lamelo, can they fit together uh, and all of that? And you know, Brandon Miller, if Brandon Miller goes to do people start already doing the I guess just the Dame replacement Scoot and <laughs> and all of that? But I can't imagine Scoot and Lamelo together. That's gonna be so. That's gonna be so interesting to see those two guys because they both thrive with the ball in their hands. But Melo's a really good passer, so you're like, okay, you can see how that would work. At least in transition, they're gonna be great because Scoot's like elite athletically. Here's the thing though: if Charlotte falls in love with Brandon Miller and it becomes like a Portland Scoot yeah, Anderson not thing, out of the question. Portland could you know immediately get a, a pretty good trade haul for for scoot henderson if they entertain that if they wanted to go all in one more time for damian lillard uh to yeah, try to win a, yeah to try to win a title what do they need that. another small guard <laughs> one, one of the i do want to say this real, real quick i know we talk about trade possibilities and, and all that one one of the options also is which we've been talking about it is trading the 10th pick and trading out of the draft altogether and it is like, you know, I, I think that they, if I had to bet, I would bet on them moving down, keeping adding a young guy to this, you know, to this team while also getting a rotation piece. But are it is, does this allow Dallas? And this is a good thing to, you know, end on, we'll probably talk about in the next few days. But does this, does them land at 10 or does them landing at 10 increase the likelihood of a bigger trade for them this summer? Because hmm. now you're already going to be working with two first round picks. Well, now you got it. Now you can guarantee one of those first round picks being a top 10 pick. So now does that increase the likelihood for a bigger swing this summer or a bigger swing before the draft or are there a multiple pieces type of trade? Like the other day I was talking about, I mean, we did all kinds of different trades. Like what, you know, what's your reaction to a Jordan pool, Kaminga, Moses Moody for, you know, the 10th pick, you know, Tim and Josh green. And, you know, so like, is I, I'm just throwing out like those are like <laughs> it opens up the possibility for some bigger, more complicated trades. Now that Dallas has that 10th pick. That's that's what the situation becomes now. And going forward, we'll talk a lot about the possibilities. We'll probably do trades tomorrow. We'll start to talk through all the different oh, yeah. possibilities. You know that we love to fire up the trade machine and talk about those options. But this is a, a win for the Dallas Mavericks. They needed to keep this pick. They needed to keep this asset to have an asset to move forward with. You know at least – you're going to improve <laughs> in some way by keeping this pick because you have this as a trade ship. So uh, let us know in the comment section who do you uh, who do you want the Mavericks to take or who do you want the Mavericks to trade for in that. We will be back tomorrow talking about trades. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.